All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the pick audio technique similar to sound keys for Red Giant. So if you don't have Red Giant, this will be your best bet. So I have the audio and I have this rectangle that we're going to animate. So let me go ahead and set up some keyframes for the position. This video is going to be a little bit longer. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just setting the uh, keyframes for rotation and position. All right. Um, also, I'm setting the color as well. If you go to link in constraints, constraints and then to connector, pick audio, then you'll be able to create this new comp. Now, when you play this, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change anything. Um, you do want to select the uh, property that you want the comp to link to. So we're going to do position at this point. But then you got to go inside of the comp itself and move the ear. It's going to be like this ear icon that you have to move so that way it overlaps the sound waves. So the sound waves are pretty small, so you do have to am increase the amplitude, which you can go under uh, effect controls to increase the amplitude. So all you have to do is uh, maybe crank it up to like 150, 200. Let me see. Well, I'm going to do like, I'm going to go crazy with it. So I'm probably do like 900%. And then I'm going to move the ear so that way it overlaps to the base. As you know, the highs are on the far right and the bass are in the, at the far left, and the mids are in the middle, if you think about it as a spectrum. Um, I will say, overall, um, Red Giant Sound Keys is way better than this. If you can't, if you don't have Sound Keys, then this is probably the next best thing. Uh, if you go under the spectrum, you can isolate sounds. The minimum and maximum is just the value, similar to Sound Keys, that you want block the jump. So I'm, I want to block the jump at 100% of what I've... Uh, keyframed but if you don't want to block the jump that much then you can play around with the maximum to be like 50 percent or 25 percent um, but for to keep things basic i'm just going to keep it at 100 percent and then we play this back you'll see that now when the music plays uh, the block is going to jump all right so it's pretty uh pretty jittery i won't say jittery but it's pretty choppy it's like very precise if you want it to have some ease to it you can increase the ease you can also add a blur to the spectrum so that way it's not like so exact but for for now what we want to do is let's try just increasing the ease and see if it's a lot better but this is where you can change the frequencies you see where it says minimum frequency maximum frequency where you can pinpoint it at a very precise frequency so that way you can get a very precise uh, animation from the sound. So now it should be a little bit less jumpy. Yeah, still kind of jumpy, but not as much. And then if you use the Gaussian blur, this will give it even more of a smoother uh, jump. Make sure you turn off repeat edge pixels because you're dealing with a vector layer. And then you want to set it to horizontal. And then you just want to crank this up. Once you've got it cranked up, then you'll be able to uh, play around where the ear should go. And then let's see what it looks like. Yeah, you see how it's like, it's kind of better, I guess, but you can always play around with the keyframes on here. You can do easy ease on the keyframes. I'm using linear keyframes. You can even use a key cleaner to play around with it too. If you want to use key cleaner for a Duick uh, Angela. So that's another way you can make it smoother. Uh, like I said, this tool is good. It's better than nothing, I would say. But it's definitely not better than sound keys. So if you need something that needs motion movement, then sound keys I think is better. But if you, for other stuff like changing the color, rotation, um, this other type of simple stuff, I think this is not bad. This is a good uh, good tool. You can even add a second or a third or fourth pick audio layer and then just connect different properties on, on there. So this thing, you can do as many as you want, to be honest. 
and all I'm doing right now is just setting the different part of the spectrum I want to focus on for the rotation and the color. Now for this one I'm going to connect the rotation and the color to the same comp whereas the first one we just connected the position to the comp. Just to show you that you can connect multiple properties to the same comp. Just by selecting on the property and then clicking on properties under the link and constraints. So now you'll see So you'll see the rotation change as the music plays, and then we'll do the same thing with the color. And then when we play it, the color will change now as the music plays based on the sound wave that's being activated. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions on how to do this, let me know. But that's, yeah, that's pretty straightforward as far as uh, how to approach this.